to the P5 science class. Because of that, all right, Dr. Ras is here to teach you how to use the correct terms, get the correct medical terms or scientific terms when you're referring to the different parts of the human reproductive system, okay? So today, okay, like as mentioned, we are going to talk about reproduction in human. And yes, I am Dr. Ras just for today. <laughs> and we're going to look at um, sexual reproduction that occurs between a male and a female. Okay, and then after that, followed by identifying the male reproductive parts and the cells in humans, as well as the female reproductive parts and cells in humans. Okay, so you must learn to use the right terms, the right uh, uh, words, okay, to describe the male reproductive parts and the female reproductive parts. Now, before we begin, okay, I have a small student here named Ethan who is very curious just like you and just like me when I was his age. Okay so let's take a look at what Ethan has to say. There's no sound so I will narrate for you. Hi I'm Ethan. He looks very happy. <laughs> One day I discovered something amazing in my pet fish tank. I noticed a bunch of jelly-like balls sitting at a corner of the tank. Upon closer inspection, I saw tiny eyes inside each ball. Okay, my teacher explained to me that most fishes lay eggs, which will eventually hatch and grow into adults. Okay, so you've learned about the life cycle of animals before, right? In the lower primary block. Okay, so you can see egg. Right, when it hatches, it forms the young of the fish, the small baby fish, and then it will eventually grow into adult fish, and then the cycle continues. Okay, as long as the fish is able to survive. Okay, so it will continue as long as the fish survives. And then he also talked about plants. Okay, plants having life cycles. However, for plants, they will produce a seed instead of an egg. So he found out about seeds, okay, growing into a young plant, germinating into a young plant, and eventually forming an adult plant. And he <laughs> took one step further, okay, by encouraging, as in he's being encouraged, okay, to grow his own uh, seeds at home, okay, to germinate them. And what happens is that the seeds actually grew and sprouted, okay, so he was very, very happy with his experiment. But then, okay, Ethan was still very curious. Okay, although I can understand the concept okay, of life cycle okay, pretty much, and then um, if fish lay eggs and plants produce seeds, what about humans? So basically, he asked this question, okay, if fish lay eggs and plants produce seeds, what about humans? Okay, so he's looking at his mom and he's like, hmm... So I'm pretty sure all of you probably had this question before and you probably asked your mom or your dad about it before. Am I right? Okay, so yes, he is smiling because he's curious. Okay, as a scientist, everybody have to be curious. Yeah, so that's where we're going to start off with for today. Okay, so where do babies come from? A baby is created when a male and female parent come together so that their reproductive cells can meet. This process is called sexual reproduction. So if you are asked, okay, what is sexual reproduction? This is the definition or the meaning. Okay, when you have one male parent, one female parent coming together and then have their reproductive cells meet before we call it sexual reproduction. Okay, so we must always have two parents. This helps to ensure survival and continuity of the human species. So this is the same reasoning behind life cycle of plants, life cycle of animal, okay, life cycle of humans is also to ensure continuity of our species. Let's move on first. Now, for not all animals have to undergo uh, sexual reproduction. Okay, there are actually some special type of animals who don't okay, need two parents. For example, okay, if you look at the picture on the left, you can see that this is a starfish. Okay, starfish and some other organisms, they undergo asexual reproduction. Asexual means single parent, okay, only involves one parent. So you can see this starfish, one day it decided to just break off one of its limbs, and the limbs actually can grow into a new tiny starfish, and eventually it'll grow into a big one. Yeah, so instead of having to find a male or a female, starfish can just reproduce by itself, 
Okay, we, of course, humans, we can't do that as well. Okay, you can't just break your finger and then your finger grow into a new you. Okay, it doesn't happen. <laughs> yes. And then the next uh, method of reproduction, this one is super uh, interesting because I've never seen this before until I went to research. Okay, um, it's called selfing, which is self-fertilization. Okay, so for this particular fish, uh, it's a female fish. Okay, it develops the male reproductive parts to impregnate itself. So one day the fish decided, okay, I want to have new babies. No need to find a, a male. Okay, I'm just going to uh, make my own <laughs> male reproductive parts and then I'll just uh, self-pregnant. Yeah, so very interesting, right? Selfing, okay? So it doesn't even need a male counterpart. Okay, so far I've not read up about the male version of this. Okay, so far I only read about the female fish. Maybe they haven't discovered yet if the male can produce male, uh, female reproductive parts. Yeah, so these are the special cases, okay? Special cases. So starting off with our bubble question number one. Living things reproduce so, and then there's a long blank here. Okay, they will continue to survive. Their species will continue to exist. They will have offsprings that look exactly like them, and their offspring will be able to take care of them when they are old. All right, so which one do you think will be the best um, statement? Majority are able to tell me the answer is number two, okay, because the species will continue to exist. But some of you got tricked and put number one. Okay, number one cannot be accepted because it's incomplete. Okay, when they say living things reproduce so they will continue to survive, what are the they referring to, the living things, right? So it can just be like adult stage, right? Or the young stage. Okay, so if it's adult stage, they will continue to live and then after that, they will still die, right? But that doesn't mean their species will continue to exist, correct? So the key word here is this. We want to ensure that even after the adult dies, Okay, it still can continue the species by uh, giving birth before that. Okay, so before it dies of old age or something, right, you have to give birth to a young version of themselves. Get it? Okay, so very important to write down the species part. All right, moving on to the next part. Ah, this one is concerning you, okay, because you are at the age where some of you may be undergoing puberty or some of you may have not started your puberty yet, okay, but you still need to know what you'll be experiencing. Okay, so what is puberty? Puberty, um, okay, so let's see. The human reproductive system needs to be fully developed, okay, before sexual reproduction can take place. The development of the reproductive parts occur during puberty. Okay, so puberty is a time in life when a boy or a girl becomes sexually mature. It is a process that usually begins at the ages of 8 to 11 for the girls and 9 to 12 for the boys. Okay, so for females, you will undergo puberty usually on average a bit faster than the males. Okay, the males will undergo puberty a bit later. Right? And what happens during puberty is that it causes physical changes and it will affect us differently. Okay, so they give you the age range, 8 to 11, 9 to 12. So every individual will have a different time okay, when they undergo puberty. It has a lot of factors to depend on. Okay, it can be because of your genetics, can be because of uh, you know, your health. Right? So you don't worry about you know, not undergoing puberty uh, within the age range because it's different for everyone. So what is puberty? Okay, it's the development. Is this part? This is the definition. Dr. Ross will tell you. Okay, the development of the reproductive parts. Okay, so your reproductive parts or your reproductive system will become mature. Yeah, so maybe some of you are undergoing it. Maybe some of you have not. It is fine. Okay, it is fine. Now, what type of physical changes? Okay, if you are undergoing puberty, okay, what will you expect to see? Okay, this is normal for all individuals. Huh? Right, so for the girls, okay, first of all, you will notice that okay, the female organs, for example, the breasts, they will start to develop. Right, and then uh, growth of pubic hair, which is pubic hair is the hair covering your private parts. Okay, growth spurt means suddenly you will increase in height. Okay, then we also have menstruation or what we call period. Okay, this is not found in males, only in females. Growth of underarm hair. Okay, change in body shape. Usually for the females, the hips become wider. Okay, this is to accommodate the size of the baby if the female were to get pregnant in the future, right? And then, uh, of course, eventually when you reach about the age of 16, 17, you will reach the adult breast size. Whereas for the male, it will be a bit different, okay? We do not see growth in the breast, okay? For male, it will be more of the scrotum and the testis. 
Okay, later on, I will show in the diagram okay, where you can find scrotums and testes. Change in voice. Have you seen this happening before to people that you know or to even yourself okay, for the voice? Right? Some of you, maybe you have experienced the breaking of the voice, right? Previously, you sound very high pitch like me. And then suddenly, you, you're like, oh, hi, my name is uh, Ethan. <laughs> Your voice become deeper. Yeah, so yeah, for boys, it's very common. Girls, of, of course, will, your voice will become a little bit deeper, but not as much as boys. Okay? It's not as noticeable as boys. Yeah. And then uh, the penis will grow. Uh, uh, grow for cubic hair. This is common for both uh, girls and boys. Uh. So you have hair covering your private parts. This is normal. Okay, grow spurt, right? Again, you'll grow like tall and like, suddenly, like really fast. And then change in body shape. Uh, so for the males, you'll develop more muscles. Okay, because biologically, males are meant to, to be more, you know, muscular and stronger, right? And then, uh, of course, growth of underarm and more noticeable facial hair. Okay, so for females, we do have facial hair, but it's not as thick or as coarse as the male's facial hair. So we, we don't really tend to grow like beard or moustache, okay, like for the boys. Yes. Okay, so any questions so far? All right, why is menstruation is known as period? I'll talk more about that in the next slide. Okay, when it says change in body shape, uh, certain parts, okay, so for the female, your, the hips part will be wider. Male, your shoulders will become broader. Okay, your shoulders will become broader. Yeah. Can, can I mean ask about seahorses? Do the male seahorse reproduce? I think the male seahorse, they will take care of the young. Yeah, they still need male and female to reproduce, but the male seahorse will tend to take care of the young instead of the female seahorse. Yeah, that's actually quite an interesting topic, but we have to talk about it another, another time because it's not related to human reproduction. <laughs> okay, it's quite interesting. You can find out also if you want to read up more about it. Now, the question about menstruation. Okay, so what is it, right? So for all females, a healthy females will have to undergo this. Okay, we call it the menstrual cycle when you reach puberty, okay? So it is an event sequence of events that occurs when the female body prepares itself for the possibility of pregnancy, all right? And if, let's say, the female is not pregnant, okay, she will undergo menstruation, which is the bleeding, okay? Bleeding from the reproductive part, which can last from two to seven days. And again, like, let me reiterate, okay, for different girls, okay, your uh, time when you started your period will be different, the number of days that you're experiencing your period will also be different. Okay, so you don't worry too much if you see, oh, your friends are already starting their period and you haven't, it is normal. Okay, because it's different for individuals. Right, this is just the estimated. Okay, it can be from two to seven days. Yeah. Okay, so for the females, you should know this if you're already starting to have your period. Okay, you probably have to get your sanitary pad. Okay, sanitary pad is uh, designed to absorb the blood, okay, to, to remove it effectively. And sometimes when you're having or undergoing your period, you can experience mood swings and cramps. Okay, so it can get a bit uncomfortable. You can feel like a bit of cramping near your tummy area. Yes, that is quite common. Okay, so what I always uh, tell myself is if I'm experiencing that, I will just put a heat pack, uh, a heat pack, a bottle of hot water and just put it near there. So you'll be like, feel more comfortable. What if the period lasts more than seven days, then probably need to check with the doctor because if you are experiencing period for like a very long time, something is not quite right. Yeah, maximum is one week. Anything more than that, uh, should try to check with the doctor. Okay, so for the boys, this is still good information for you. Okay, in case you, you know, you have your female siblings, if you have sisters, you know, um, or in the future, okay, you want to know more about, you know, your future wife. Okay, what to do when she's experiencing her period. Okay, she might have mood swings. Okay, feel a bit, you know, uncomfortable and then get very grumpy. Uh, mood swings means uh, the emotion change. So one, one time you'll be like happy and then suddenly become very angry or irritated, easily annoyed. Mm. Okay, so yeah, these are very common. Okay, common symptoms. Boys do not have to undergo menstruation. Okay, because your body does not prepare for pregnancy. It happens to females because the female have to prepare for pregnancy just in case if uh, she gets pregnant. Uh, for the first time, is it a lot? Uh, it depends. Again, it depends on individual, the, the amount of bleeding. Hmm. 
it will not be so much until you have you know total blood loss. It will not be that much. <laughs> okay, let me let me show the next slide first. Huh? while waiting for you to type out your question. Okay, bubble question number two. Okay, which of the following physical changes take place when both girls and boys undergo puberty? Okay, so the question is asking about what type of physical change takes place okay, to both boys and girls. Okay, so let me look at the results first. Mm, oh, okay, not too bad, not too bad. Although some of you got tricked and put number four. Uh, yes, actually, okay. The answer should be number two, right? Number two. Okay, because like I mentioned, increase in height, yes. Growth of under eye and pubic hair, yes. But depending on the boys, this is more particularly for males. Okay, females don't really deepen the voice. We're talking about like very noticeable deepening of the voice. Yeah. And sometimes the voice may even sound like it's crack. <laughs> yeah. So for the boys, you know, get ready. Yeah? Get ready. If you haven't undergone puberty yet, okay, when it's your time, you can really feel that your voice is like much deeper. Oh, finally, time to bring out our special guest, drum roll. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> GB is actually right here, sitting right beside me all this while. <laughs> Yay! Welcome, GB. GB agreed to join us today and has given me permission to remove the organs so that you can take a better look at the reproductive system. Okay, so I am going to zoom in to GB so that you can take a better look at GB. Okay. All right, so. First of all, I'm going to remove KGB's organs gently first. Okay, so we have the two lungs. Okay, all of us have two lungs. And then you can see here, over here, this is your heart, right? It's almost the size of like a human fist when you clench it. Ooh, what do we have here? Who can tell me what is this uh, organ? It's quite big. This is the liver, right? Very good. Liver helps to remove toxins from the body, okay? Let's put this down. And then GB probably hasn't eaten anything. So you can see that the size of GB's stomach is pretty small. <laughs> it's still quite small. Now over here, you can see where the intestines are. Okay, we have the large intestine at the top. Okay, small intestines below. So I'm going to remove all of these parts. Oops. Okay, let me just unhinge this first. There you go. Okay, let me just put it aside. And over here, finally, you can see that this is where the reproductive system is situated, okay, near the abdomen and somewhere at lower region, right? So over here, GB is showing the female reproductive part. Okay, as you can see, this is the female version. But GB is very special because not only that GB has the female reproductive part, GB also has the male reproductive part. Okay, so yeah, you can interchange it. <laughs> yes, so GB is very, very special. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you, right, I'm going to zoom in on this, right, just to give you a 3D view of the, the male reproductive parts. Okay, and then this one will be the female. And as you can see, for the male, a lot of the features are exterior, whereas the female is inside. Okay, so we'll start off with the easier ones first. Okay, for males, you only need to know two parts. Right, so I'm going to use my pen here to sort of show to you okay, which parts you need to know for your exams. All right, so this part here, okay, this will be the penis. All right, and on left and right, okay, this circular structure here, this is the scrotum. Okay, it's like a skin. And inside the scrotum will be the testis. Right, so testis is where the reproductive cells are formed. Okay, so let me just get this uh, apart okay, to show you what's inside. Okay. Right, so this is the cross-section of the male reproductive parts. Okay, cross-section. So this is the front view. This is the side view. As you can see, this top part over here, okay, this circular structure here, this is the bladder where the urine is formed and stored. Okay, and when you feel like passing your urine out, okay, it will go through out from the penis. This circular structure here will be where the testis is, okay, where the reproductive cells are formed. And it will also come out okay, through the same exit, which is through the penis. 
Okay, so you only need to learn two things, the penis and the testis for the male reproductive parts. All right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so now take out your notebook. I'm going to show you um, the notes section. So I need you to copy down certain things. I will share back the screen with you. Just give me one second. <laughs> there is nothing to be disgusted about. This is natural. Okay, all males would have these parts. And if you don't have it, then that will be unnatural. Ah, okay, so it's natural, right? Don't feel disgusted. Okay, so we have the testis. Um, take note of the spelling. Testis is referring to one, okay, one part, whereas testis also pronounced similar, but with the letter E, is re uh is referring to two of them, okay, the two parts. All right, so this is where the male reproductive cell or the sperm cell. Okay, so if you don't want to spell out the whole term male reproductive cell, you can just use sperm or sperm cell. And the penis is the organ that releases the sperms during sexual intercourse. Yeah. Okay, so Ayush asked, is GB male or female? I would say that GB is neither. Okay, GB is very special. <laughs> it does not identify as, as a male or female. So take note, only the testis and the penis, okay, for the male parts. For female, it's going to get a bit more complicated. Okay, reason being is because you also need to talk about the parts where the baby develops. Okay, so, right, so here we have, okay, this is the front view, right, and then we're going to look at the back view first. You see that? Right, so you can see that there's this little, like, two red structure here, okay, on each side, that will be the ovaries. And in the center, this circular structure is actually the womb. Okay, you can't really tell until I take off this part. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. Ah, can you see that? Look at that. So cute. What is this? Is this an egg? It's too big to be an egg. What is this? Who can tell me? It's a baby, yes, or what we call a fetus. Okay, it hasn't developed fully into a baby yet. Um, this is the actual size of a fetus when it is about 10 to 11 weeks. Okay, so when mothers are pregnant for 10 to 11 weeks, this is the size of the baby or the fetus. And we all used to be this size. Very cute. <laughs> it's very small. All right, so this part here is the womb. Okay, this is the womb. So it will, it will be like enlarged okay, when the baby is like growing bigger. Okay, because the womb is muscular, so it can actually stretch. Mm. All right, so I'm going to, again, remove these two parts so that we can see what's the inside on the female reproductive part. Okay, so you look at the female one. Ah, a lot more features, right? A lot more details. Okay, so I'm going to point out to you, right? So for the female, okay, there's actually three openings. Okay, opening number one, opening number two, okay, and then opening number three. Okay, so there's one here at the top, one here, and one over here. Okay, so this opening over here, right, this is actually the anus. This long stretch here is the rectum, okay, where the feces or the waste product is temporarily stored. Then the vagina is actually up here, okay, the second hole here, right, and it will lead to the womb. Okay, this is the womb. So originally, okay, my little fetus here should have been sitting right here at the womb here, okay. And then on top, Right, slightly above here, this will be the opening to the bladder where the urine is temporarily stored. Right, so you have three openings. Okay, and this is very important because now you know okay, that when the baby is born, it will go out through the vagina okay, and not through the, the opening that is leading to the urine or the opening that is leading to the feces. Okay, so it's not mixed together. Okay, it's a different opening altogether. Ah, yes, I'm a doctor. Of course, I know a lot about these things. <laughs> Why is the female bladder so small, but the male bladder is bigger? Hmm, good question. Does that mean that girls have to go to the toilet more frequently than males? Could be. Possible. Right? Possible. <laughs> Some of you need to go to use the toilet. Okay, sure, sure, sure. You can go, but hurry up back. Okay, so I am going to return back to my main screen. Okay, return back to my main screen. Right, so the first part okay, that I mentioned, the first part, which is a circular structure, it's called the ovary. Okay, it is called the ovary. And if there's more than one, okay, there are two in a female, so it will be called ovaries, where the female reproductive cell 
all the egg cell is formed. Okay, so just now in the male reproductive system, it will be called the testis, right? Testis form the sperm cells, whereas for females, they form the egg cell in the ovary. Okay, just like in plant reproductive system, right? You have the egg inside the ovule. Ah, okay, so this is where the eggs are formed, right? So after reaching puberty, the ovary will release one egg cell every month. Okay, just one. Sometimes maybe two, and that's how you get twins. Okay, somebody asked, how are babies formed? All right, so for the formation of the fetus and baby, we will actually cover this in a lot of detail next lesson, okay, which is next week after Chinese New Year. So I will save your question for next week. Yes, and also there's a cord on the belly button that will be covered again next week. <laughs> Triplets, twins, hmm, good question, right? Think about it. All right, so then... Uh, just now you said babies are born through the stomach. No, uh, it's not the stomach. It's supposed to be the womb. If you want to be more scientific, you can use the term uterus. Okay, it's where the fetus or the young baby develops during pregnancy. Okay, so this image over here, this is actually the egg. This whole thing, this is the egg. Mm. And only one is released every month, mostly okay, on average. So the number, okay, so the number of eggs that a female will have, right, once she reaches puberty, okay, all together inside the ovary, there should be about 300 to 400 eggs. And one will be released every month. Yeah. So inside the ovary, okay, just 300 to 400 eggs. But for males, they produce millions of sperms almost every day. Yeah, males form even more, okay, the number of eggs that we have. All right, so we'll talk more about the formation of the baby, the fetus. Can we talk more about twins, triplets in the next lesson? Okay, this lesson, we will just focus on the reproductive parts first, as well as the cells. Okay, moving on. Still have two more parts. Okay, we have the fallopian tube. Okay, this tube over here, this part over here. Okay, take note, in exams, you are not expected to know the name, as in you're not expected to label using the word fallopian, but they will still need you to know that this is where the sperm and the egg cells meet during fertilization. Okay, so the sperms will make itself, okay, from here, it will go up, and then the egg will be released from the ovary, and when they meet, okay, they will be meeting at the fallopian tube. Okay, so you just try to recall for plants, Okay, remember the pollen grains grows the pollen tube and it will go down all the way to the ovary before it reaches the ovules. Okay, same process here, but for the sperm cell, it can actually swim up. It has a tail and it can swim, right? And then for the uh, last part here, this is what we call the vagina. Okay, the vagina. This is where the sperms are deposited during sexual intercourse or during mating. Okay, so the layman's term, they use this is sex, but in exams, we don't just use the word sex, we use sexual intercourse. Okay, we use the proper term. Mm, okay. Ready for the third bubble question. Okay, study the picture of the human reproductive system below. Okay, so we have the female one on the left and the male one on the right. Which of the following shows the functions of the systems above? So where is the female sex cell produced and where is the male sex cell produced? Okay, giving you a clue, female sex cell is also referring to the egg cell, okay, the egg, and then the male sex cell is the sperm. So where are they produced? All right, let me take a look at the results first. Oh, not too bad. Improvement from the previous question. Majority of you are able to tell me that the egg cell is found in A. Okay, what is A again? Which part is this called? Who can tell me what is A referring to? Ovary, yeah, with one ovary without the IES. Okay, how do you spell it? Is it with the E or with the I? Olivia said testis with an I. Very good. Because it's only referring to one. Okay, so you have to be very careful with the terms you use. Is it singular or is it plural? Okay, B is the womb, C is the vagina. And then D is, of course, the penis, right? The sperm is not being formed there. It actually uh, goes out from the penis. All right, bubble question number four. Study the diagram of the human reproductive system below. Which of the following statement is not correct? So incorrect, okay, wrong statement. Let's read this together. Fertilization occurs inside the body of system X, okay? Fertilization does not occur in the structure labeled A in system X. 
Sperms are deposited in B and will swim towards the egg for fertilization. So B and then swim towards the egg, okay. The sex cells produced by system X are different from those produced in system Y. So which statement is incorrect? Hmm, what kind of clues can I give you? All right, just look at where they are labeling. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, right? So if you look at option two, they say that fertilization does not occur in structure label A. So is that a correct statement or that? Does fertilization happen in A? That's a question you need to ask yourself. Does it happen in A? Mm. Where do the sperm and the, uh, and the egg cell meet? So fertilization is when the sperm plus egg okay, meet. That's my big clue. That's what fertilization means. Okay. Okay, so let me take a look at the results first. Okay, result says that a lot of you got tricked and put number three. <laughs> what? But majority are still able to tell me is... um. Wait, no. Trick and put number two. It's supposed to be number three. Okay, so why is it that it's number three and not number two? Fertilization does not occur in structure A. Of course, it does not occur, right? This is the correct statement, isn't it? Where does fertilization occur? Where do the sperm and the egg cell meet? Fallopian tube. Yes, yes, yes. So it should be meeting over here. Okay, this part here. This is where fertilization happens. Okay, so the, the sperm will find the egg over here. All right, that's why it is not at A. A is where the egg cells are being produced. The sperm don't go all the way to the ovary, okay? Doesn't go all the way there. Um, so this is a right statement. Okay, sperms are deposited in B. Okay, sperms is not deposited in the womb. It should be deposited where? Where will the sperm be deposited? Rex say in C. Very good. What is C? C is referring to the vagina. Yeah. So don't get confused. Sperms don't get deposited in B. B is where the baby is uh, formed. Why some females have to undergo surgery? Uh, because of complication. Okay, maybe the is too painful for the mother, or you know, the baby could not come out from the vagina that easily, so they have to like have surgery to remove it straight from the womb. Yeah, so it depends. Yeah, it depends. Try it yourself. Okay, we have a try it yourself question. Let's try this together. Okay, how is system X different from system Y in terms of the location in the body? Okay, so recall what you see in GB, right? Where is system Y found? System Y is referring to the male. Okay, so just now remember I said that the male parts, you can actually see it from B. Outside, yes. Okay, so it's outside the body. Okay, the penis, the scrotum containing the testis is outside. Okay, there's actually a good reason for that, right? The reason why males have their reproductive parts on the exterior part is because, okay, for the testis, okay, it has to be uh, placed, okay, outside the body. Okay, due to... Um, because it needs lower body temperature. Okay, for the sperm to form. This is a bit of additional knowledge, but could be good for you to know. Okay, so sperms cannot form properly under normal body temperature. So that's why it has to be like cooler outside of the body temperature. Yeah, for some reason, that's just how it works. Okay, but for female, it's fine. Eggs can form within the body. Okay, so for female, the system is found inside the body. Okay, the eggs can survive normal body temperature. Whereas for the males, the, the sperm cell cannot survive body temperature. That's why it's outside. It's hanging outside. Next, bubble question five. We only have the last two questions. Okay, In human reproductive system, one egg is released each month while many sperms are being produced every day. Okay, almost millions. I'm talking about millions here. Okay, millions of sperms are produced every day. Millions. Which of the following could be the possible reasons for the large production of sperm? Okay, so why do you think males have to produce so much sperms every day? What's the reason for it? Okay, look at the options carefully. Okay, is it because the egg can choose okay, which sperm to fertilize with? 
Or is it because more sperm can fertilize one egg at a time? Or the egg will take a shorter time to be fertilized? Or the egg will have a higher chance to be fertilized? All right, so think about this part here. This is the main clue. And another clue I can tell you is that it is similar to the reason why there are many pollen grains being formed in the male plant. Ah, so what is the reason? Okay, let me look at the results. Eh? You said that it was difficult, but how come majority still can tell me the correct answer? Hmm? Hmm? You're trying to trick Dr. Russ, is it? <laughs> you told me it's difficult, but a lot of you can get it correct. Okay, the answer is number two. D only, okay? It's because you are talking about higher chances of fertilization. Okay, A is incorrect because the egg, the egg does not choose. Okay, when the egg meets the sperm, it's by chance. Okay, the egg cannot say, oh, I want to choose that sperm or this sperm. No, no, no. It cannot choose. <laughs> All right? So it doesn't have like a brain to think, yeah? And then more sperms can fertilize the egg. That is incorrect because just now remember I mentioned only one sperm. Okay, meet and fuse with one egg. Okay, so we cannot have multiple sperm fertilizing one egg. That would not happen. Okay, naturally it will not happen. Eggs will take a shorter time to be fertilized. Uh, this is not really relevant to the question where they say large production of sperm. Okay, when you talk about large production of sperm, is to increase the chance of fertilization. Okay, just like in pollen grains, okay, not all of the pollen grains will land onto the stigma. Some of them will fall on the ground. Some of them will be still stuck on the pollinator's body. Okay, same goes for the sperm cells. Okay, some of them may die in the process of trying to reach the egg. Yeah, so not all of them will be able to reach the egg. So to increase the chances of it, you have to produce like millions of them in the first place. Yeah, sperms are like fishes. <laughs> a little bit because they have the tail and then they can swim. So the strongest and the healthiest, I guess the healthiest and strong sperm will be eventually meeting the egg and surviving and not dying along the way. Yes, we do have one more bubble question. Okay, one more. This will be the last one. And this is an application question. Okay, so you have to think, right? Due to an unfortunate accident, one of the men's testes is permanently damaged. Oh dear. So you have two testes. Okay, one of them is permanently damaged. Will this person still have a chance to reproduce? If no, explain your answer. If yes, explain your answer. Huh. So think about it. All right. Let me see. Where's the female? Eh, where's the male reproductive parts over here? Let me put them together again. Just to show you, right? So for the male reproductive parts, okay, it has uh, two testes, right? So imagine this is the male reproductive part. Okay, and then you have two testes and one of them is permanently damaged. So what's going to happen? Clue, okay, clue. Think about the function of the testes, okay? You have two of these, right? Each of them, okay, each produce sperms, right? So if one of them is damaged, okay, what will happen? It's okay, Awek. Dr. Russ will help to explain. <laughs> oh, yay. Give yourself a round of applause. Yay. 90% of you get it correct. Okay, so you're able to tell me that it is option number four. Okay, so even if one of the testes is spoiled or damaged, the other testis is still around and it's still able to produce sperm cells needed for fertilization. All right, so that's why it's not too bad. Okay, you still have two. If anything happens to one, the other one can still produce, uh, perform its function. But if both are damaged, then that's it. The male will not be able to reproduce in the future. Yeah, why not number three? Okay, penis is not damaged and it's still able to release sperm cells. But we are talking about the testes, not the penis. Yeah, so it's kind of like not directly answering the question. Mm -hmm. It's okay. If, if you have questions about it, it's fine. Because like I said, it's a learning experience for everyone. <laughs> yes, the clue was kind of big. All right, so we've come to the final slide for today's lesson. Okay, so far we've learned about what is sexual reproduction. Basically, a male and female parent comes together, and then the female and male reproductive cells meet, get okay, the sperm cell and the egg cell. 
right, meat, and then we have uh, fertilization taking place. Okay, then we've learned about the different parts. Okay, for the males, we only need to know two, okay, testis and penis. And then for female, there are four parts, okay, your ovary, fallopian tube, you don't need to know the name, but you need to know where it is situated and where is the function. Okay, and then the womb or the uterus, and finally the vagina. Okay, so I will promise you, uh, next lesson, we'll talk more about how the sperm cell actually swim up to meet the egg cell. Okay, we're going to look into that. We're also going to talk about the formation of the fetus. Okay, so that will be in the subsequent lessons. Bye! <laughs> Take care!